if you ever speak to me in that way again, it will be the last words that you utter. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my Twisted Life TV. I am Poetry. You are here for a brand new TV show called Ambitions. It is showing on the OWN Network, on the Oprah Revenue Network. And um, <clears throat> starring Robin Gibbons, Brian Wright, Essence Atkins. I didn't get all the actors' names that are in the show, but it has a stellar cast. A stellar cast. First of all, I want to give a shout out to Kat Harlem. She was one of the main people that was um, suggesting that I review and recap the show. And I'm here to tell you right now, I love it. If, it, if it's going to be anything like this first episode, I'm going to be totally here for it the entire freaking season. I do have a couple complaints. Y'all know I always do. This show is another black TV show that's based in Atlanta. As if Atlanta, New Orleans, Memphis, New York, and Chicago are the only cities where black people are prosperous and thrive. I really wish that they would find another city to base this on. I'm like, damn, I'm so sick of seeing shows based in Atlanta. I really am. I really am. Um, <clears throat> what was the other thing that I was uh, upset about? I think I initially was upset that this was going to be another black show where we seemed like we had to have white people involved. But watching this episode, that became less and less of an issue for me. So I, I like the way that every character on the show is intertwined with one another. It's like a crash moment. At some point, every character is involved with one of these other characters in some kind of form or fashion. And I am here for it. I'm loving it. So we open up with this couple in a very, very intimate makeout session. The girl is laying on the bed, got her lingerie on, and he like placing these soft, subtle kisses all over her body. I'm like, yes, what is going on here, right? The soundtrack of the show, I'm already here for it. The soundtrack is giving me all the vibes. So yes, I'm here for that too. And um, the characters that we're looking at right now is Amara and Titus. Amara and Titus Hughes. They're both the lawyers. She's a, a DA with the district attorney's office. He is a, a private lawyer working for a firm called the um, Purefoy. <clears throat> well, they in this bed together getting this hot and heavy little intimate session on. And he coming up her back. And Amara says, I love with your hands on me. Titus instantly gets out of the mood. Sits the fuck up like, what the fuck? Did you just tell me that? I was like, what the hell, Amara girl? What just happened? What just happened? She's saying, what the fuck just happened? Really? I love when your hands on me. Where have I heard that before is what Titus said. I was like, oh shit, Amara girl, what are you saying? Are you saying something to him that a secret lover has said to you and Titus found out about it? What is really going on here, girl? What is really going on? Child, yes, that is exactly what happened. Amara slipped up once upon a time, had an affair with who? Who? Say his name. You can't even say his name. Damien Collins. I said for you, don't you forget it. Don't you forget it, because I damn sure ain't going to forget it. I was like, oh, we girl. What a way to start a brand new beginning in a new city. They just moved from Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama to come to Atlanta. They thought they was going to start their marriage over fresh and new. And Titus still got feelings. He's still upset about Damien Collins' baby and what he did to his wife. He had his hands all over her body and she loved the way that felt. And now she's going to tell Titus the same damn thing. Baby, Titus and his feelings. Titus and his motherfucking feelings like she like he flipped her over on that bed though and got real serious and she was like get off didn't really show no expression in her face get off me it's if to say look my voice is calm right now but at the same damn time you don't want to try me today you don't want to try me Titus I was like hold on hold on hold on let me pause for a second child let me pause for a second the actor who was playing Titus, his body, Lord have mercy. Did y'all see when he walked away to that bathroom? 
had his little box of shorts on. His body, all the features was accentuated. His chesticle muscle was just like protruding. He had a nice touch that didn't look like it was a girl of fat booty. It was just right for a man. It looked firm. And then you could see the package in the front, baby. And he chocolatey. Claude, have mercy. That's all I'm saying right there, baby. Well, over at uh, Stephanie's crib, who was being played by Robin Givens, she enters Tracy's bedroom and is like trying to get her up. Like, hey, mama come and get up. Tracy looked dead as fuck to me. I was like, what the hell? Baby, there was a needle on the floor. It's a limadol. I don't know what the fuck limadol is. I forgot to look it up. It was on the table. Now, <clears throat> being a child of a drug household and into the drug environment, that needle, that syringe, was a little bit bigger than what a normal drug user would use. They would go to the damn Walgreens and buy that bag of skinny needles that the diabetics use. That's normally what they would get. But anyway, Stephanie is in a panic. She is yelling for Evan to call 911. He come in like hella calm, like, for what? She already dead. Y'all, I hate Brian White's mustache. I do. Oh, my God. Anyway, Brian's name is Evan. He said, she already dead, and you're next. Pulled that gun out on her and pulled that trigger, baby. I sat up in my chair. Whoa. It was just a dream. It was only just a dream. Better yet, it was a nightmare. It was a freaking nightmare. Steph looked over, and Evan sleeping in the bed laying next to her. She breathed all heavy, her chest on. <sighs> Like, heart was racing, y'all. That was just the first two minutes of the episode. The first two minutes of the episode. I was like, oh, yeah, this is good. This is good already. So, the next morning, Steph tried to fake the funk like she had a peaceful night of sleep. And Evan was like, yeah, you seem a little bit restless there. That's all right. No, I'm good. Trust me, baby. I slept good. I'm like, they all bougie sounding. Like, they all extra proper talking. I was like, okay, here we go. We can tell that they have money and influence just by the way they tone and the inflections of their voice. So, they have this daughter named Carly, who is an aspiring actress, right? She is so fucking beautiful. Um, but Steph ain't really down with her. She want her to get to work and become a lawyer like the rest of the damn family. Your mama a lawyer, your daddy a lawyer, your grandparents, and my great granddaddy. Everybody a damn lawyer. I know, I know. But that ain't what she want to do. So Evan asked her about this dude named Khalil that she's seeing. She looked kind of put off the TV. Like, oh, shit, Khalil. Of course, Stephanie is happy about Khalil because Khalil, Khalil comes from a family with money. Mm -hmm. We're going to get you together with Khalil and we're going to bridge the families together and become a power family and have all the money flowing up in these parts of it. But Carly is like, you know, I'm not really that into him like that, daddy. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, her parents are trying to force her into that doggone relationship. You can tell that Steph is one of those parents that won't always critical or whatever her daughter going to do because that's not what she want her to do. You know what I'm saying? She got that mama that's like Candace's mama on the Real Housewives of Potomac. They also have a son named Trey who we didn't get to see this episode, but they they called Trey up so he can come to um, Carly's first little production. She's going to be in Color Girls. Um, so I was like, who the fuck is Tracy? The girl that was in a dream. Who is she? Well... Carly seemed, um, like I said, she seemed very unhappy with that cat, Kalia. And um, I don't know, it's like almost like they try to force a union between them for the sake of money. So we go over to this girl named Rondell's. You know, she got the music going. She, <laughs> you know, her little restaurant, her little pie shop, she whatever. Some dude named Peter's come in. He already looked like trouble to me. Already. And she had that stank face on when he walked the door. Like, what the hell do you want? Why are you up in here? You know what I'm saying? My camera is not focusing properly. I don't know why. We gonna go with that. Maybe that's right. Um, and he reminds me of that dude. If y'all ever watched that reality TV show, LA Hair, he reminds me of the guy who was in competition with her, who kept trying to get her to sell her business and take over her clientele and stuff like that. And yep, that's exactly what he trying to do. He want her to sell the restaurant. Why? Because he trying to gentrify the fucking neighborhood, right? Um, and then that clown motherfucking threatened her, right? He was like, I would hate to see this place go up in flames. And your old man, I'm quite sure he would have trouble getting up out of here. Really, mother? Really? Is that how we doing it up here? We gonna threaten her. Okay. 
I want her to slice his ass with that damn cake cutter. That's what I want her to do. And okay, I'm going to take back my first comments that I said about this show, um, my previous assessments. I thought that they were going to make her the loud, ghetto, you know, country-talking-ass black girl. You know, the stereotype of the overweight black girl, the dark skin sister, whatever. But from this scene, she is a regular, smeggler old sister that I can fucking rock with. That's how I see Rondell. She own her own business. She don't want to take no BS from nobody. She was like, look here. <clears throat> she checked his ass. She said, you know what? You might want to get your old pasty ass up out of my shop before it's too late. And if you ever threaten my motherfucking family again, <laughs> or me, I will take this blade and stick it so far up your ass that you need a colonoscopy to find it. I was like, you better tell that motherfucker Rondell. Tell him, girl. Tell him. I was like, okay. She and Carly are two of my favorites right now. They are two of my favorites. Yes, queen. Tell that motherfucker. I like her. But he walked up on that blade. He walks up before on that blade that it stuck him through his clothing and he was bleeding. It got in deep in him. I was like, oh shit, this motherfucker crazy. Peter's is crazy, right? She was looking like, I ain't scared of you, don't motherfucker. Even though you could see the, you could, she was trembling a little bit, but she had to look like, I ain't gonna back down if you ain't gonna back down. Trust me, trust me on that. So, Amora is working for the district attorney's office, right? I am loving this show already. Everybody is lawyers. Um, like I said, we already know that Stephanie and Evan lawyers, but Evan is also the mayor. Um, her daddy owns a black law firm. He's a lawyer. Like I said, her granddaddy was a lawyer. And now Amora and Titus, they both are lawyers too. So I'm loving that. I'm loving that. It's not the typical, you know, careers for the black families that they try to give out here. Um, like I said, Rydell is a business owner. She got her own restaurant. It's called Thelma, so I wonder if that's their mama's name. Um, but uh, her boss, Karen, brings her in. It's got some, <laughs> I was laughing so hard when they named her Karen. I was just, I kept thinking about is the raisins in a potato salad Karen. That's all I kept thinking about. But Karen came in here and bring her in this case file. Look at her. The FBI is investigating the mayor. They in with some dirt. I think we should take this case, right? I think you should take this case. Um... And, you know, she's like, Evan Lancaster, the mayor? Look, I know his wife from college. I don't think that's going to be good. She's like, yeah, that's what you meant to use that to your advantage. Well, <clears throat> Karen is like, look here, I pulled some strings to bring you from Alabama over here. So show me a little bit that you're grateful that I did that, you know, because this going to boost not only your career, but mine. And Amora is like, you know what? I'm going to take the high road on this. No, I can't do it. I'm not the woman for this case. I was really surprised because usually, you know, especially like if it's a journalist or something like that, that they take the case and then they feel guilty about it. And then they got to go back to their friend and tell them why they fucking them over. Amara was like, nah, I knew the girl back in college. I can't do that. Mm -mm. I'm not the person. I'm not the person. I was like, okay, look at Amara. Look at Amara. Well, like I said, we have a stellar, stellar freaking cast in here. Stephanie Pops, you know, uh, she come in and talk to him, her mama and her, and they talking about this little gal of the day about the throw. And she wants to talk to her daddy about taking over the firm. He say, uh, you can't even keep that bottom feeder of your husband in check. You think I'm gonna let you run my dog on firm? I don't think so. I was like, ooh, <laughs> the bottom feeder of a husband. I see how much you like Evan, okay? And she's like, the only reason why I'm married to this bottom feeder of a husband, because you said it'd be good for business. I was like, oh, shit, her. Now we hear the TTT. She only married to Evan because her daddy said it's going to be good for business the same way she tried to do her daughter Carly. You see that? You see what you you see the parallels here? She trying to make her daughter Carly be with Khalil because Khalil come from this rich and fluent family, the same way her daddy made her marry Evan. You claim that you wanted a son in the mayor's office. Now I got his ass there. Okay. Um <laughs> I was like, look, it's becoming clearer. That whole dream is becoming clearer. Her and Evan don't even like each other. That's, that's what it's telling me. Mm-mm, mm-mm. He said, you got to not alert, little girl. I know you've been running around having little secret meetings with the partners, but you're trying to throw a mutiny up in this. I'll make your ass walk the plank, daughter or not. <laughs> and so he leave up out there, and she say, yeah, we'll see about that daddy. I said, oh, shit, she's about to take her daddy down. What is going on with Stephanie? Little spoiler rich girl, for real, you got to have it all. You got to have it all, girl. Okay, okay. Mm. So, Titus. 
Titus is working for the law firm that Stephanie and her daddy are trying to take down, the Pure Voice. I was like, oh, sooky, sooky, now here we go. And Amara, like I said, she works for the DA's office who's going to be looking into the damn mayor. So all this shit is going to tie in together. So they, like I said, they're all lawyers on opposing sides of the thing. And I was like, I don't like Pure Ford. Mm -mm, something ain't right with him. He just seems sneaky. Like I said, he runs this pharmaceutical company and the Carlisles are trying to turn them down. They are blaming him for perpetrating the opioid, opioid epidemic. I got the hiccups. I ain't got no water. <clears throat> the epi the opioid epidemic, right? And um, oh shit. Like I say Titus is defending Pure for it. And basically, like I say, uh, I was shocked to learn that Titus gave up his solo practice to come work for him, which was crazy to me. And it's interesting that him and his wife were both poached um to come to the ATL. It like I say, it seemed like um Pure Foy offered Titus the position first. He needed a black face. We learned this later on. He needed a black face. And then um, Amara decided to look into coming there as well. So, people finally say, like, a young brother like you will go far here, especially with my back. And Titus, like, a young brother. The fuck you mean by that? You know, he didn't say the fuck you mean by that, but he was like, a young brother. He caught the shade. He caught the, 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 um, the prejudice that the old man was speaking. He's like, yeah, Atlanta is a black city. We all know this. This is what people are saying. Even an old ass cracker like me knows this. <laughs> now Ty is feeling like the token black boy. That's what he feeling like. This reminds me of Ghost on Power when he was locked in with that deal with the, the dude with the real estate. I can't remember his name right now. Um, the, the one he opened up the foundation with, and he only wanted um, Ghost to be on her uh, as a as a name and a partner because he needed somebody black to back him. That's basically what he used in Titus for. He needs somebody black to go up against this black law firm. Well, he is so open to saying highly prejudiced shit. Um, and he expects you to just roll with it. He just roll with it. I don't know, but I, I in a way, I kind of appreciate it. I kind of appreciate him putting himself out there in the front. We know that you have some racist tendency and you have some very prejudiced ways of thinking. And he ain't trying to hide his intention. I, I may not like him, but at least I can understand and respect that. Um, but he's like, hey, Titus, me and you together, we're going to run this motherfucking city. Titus don't look too sure, though. You know... He, it's like he know he's sleeping with the enemy right here. He know he is. Now, <clears throat> the call outs, like I said, they having this big old shindig together. And um, we heard the mama, her name is Irene, talking about it. And Titus just got invited to the gala by Pure Four. You know, um, he made sure Pure Four is going to go to show the face. No mice, but give a donation and everything like that. And so now he got to go meet up with old Stephanie. And I was wondering, did he know Stephanie too? We know Amara knows Stephanie. Does he know Stephanie? He also the fuck, yeah, they do. They know each other well. They got a little history back there. They used to be lovers, competitors, enemies, whatever. Everything but friends is what uh, <laughs> Stephanie was saying. But he was like, you know, go and give me a little hug. And that hug was a little bit too cozy for me. A little bit too cozy. Both of them felt that too much in they so And Stephanie was like, you know what? Maybe I do still got a little something, something for you. But please believe I'm going to take your ass down. There's no that, sir. I'm taking your ass down. So, <clears throat> this is a good looking cast, I must say. In fact, Titus, the man who playing Titus, got me licking my lips and swallowing hard every time he come on screen, child. Like, even Peter's a nice looking white boy. Oh, he but it's his chesticles. Mm. Pure Foy. He could be some seen as a distinguished gentleman, you know. Evan, if he did something with that little mustache, you know. <laughs> All the women are gorgeous. Every last one of them. There's not been a one unattractive person that I've seen on this entire freaking cast. Not one. But Steph is like, you know, you still do a little something, something to my libido. You still do. You know, um, but I'm taking you down. He said, yeah, go ahead and do your best, ma. Go ahead and do your best. She said, my best. No, it's my worst you should be concerned with. I was like, okay, girl. Oh, she is real cocky. Real cocky. Mm, I ain't mad at her, though. I mean, I don't like her as a character. <laughs> but I ain't mad at her cockiness. <laughs> so, okay. Evan is off the chain with his sadidiness. Like, let me tell y'all. He rolled up on Peters, whose first name is Greg, but I'm going to keep calling him Peters. Rolled up on Peters with a little convoy. 
Why you got this fucking convoy? I don't know. I know you're mad. But really, you needed four or five cars to be riding along with you. He rode up on this little convoy, stepped out. They got umbrellas above his head. Ain't no rain. Ain't no rain falling. Ain't no sun shining. Why you got this umbrella up, sir? I could tell there used to be rain on the ground, but ain't none right now. Ain't no mist in the air. Why? Because Peter's hair ain't moving. His, his hair ain't flowing. It ain't wet. It, it ain't no rain out here with your house to your ass. Anyway. Peter's got that mafia mentality, yo. I'm telling you, dude. He got that mafia mentality. And he's like, look here, what you roll up on me for, Evan? I, you already know what we got on stake here. You need to be on your god dog on sister. He was like, well, I'm coming to be you about my dog on sister. Don't you ever come threaten her no more. He was like, here, look, don't let your sister be the downfall of you. Like I said, you know where I got at stake here, and you know your ass need me to get you to your next destination, which is the governor's seat. Evan's like, look here, calm down. I can handle my sister. Be the same, you better, or I will. You know, I was like, come on, Evan, you finna let this dude talk to you slick like that? Really? About your motherfucking sister? You came in here all hard and shit like you was about to do something to him, and then you leave here as soft as an unboiled egg. Like, what the fuck? So... <clears throat> Stephanie, she back at the crib getting ready for the gala, you know, in honor of her sister, her deceased sister, which I say, I believe it's Tracy. It is Tracy. It's Tracy the Dreams. They said it's a thing, and I forgot that. Her assistant, Bella, um, is getting her together, you know, got this little red satin number on, I'm saying. Um, and they seem to have more than a little work work related friendship, you know. She even invited her to the gala, gonna bring her little honeydew man, Roderick, over. So, Titus and Amara, they apparently got a daughter, too, named Deja. But Deja is off in boarding school. And for some reason, I feel like she's going to be trouble. We haven't seen her, but I just feel like Deja is going to be trouble. And she don't want to be at that boarding school. But it's a boarding school that got to do with something with stem cells and shit like that. You know, some big old brainiac shit. So, look at her. We got, got a little brainiac in the family. She probably going to have something to do with that opioid shit. She probably making manufacturing fake drugs. That's what I'm saying. You know, that's just me. You know, that's how I'm writing this story. But anyway, um, Titus went on back home. But Amara was like, look, her, look we got to still work our shit together before we bring her back home. Because I want her home too. But before we bring her back home, can me and you reconnect? Can we do that? You know what I'm saying? Um, well, he bounced up out of there. He had to leave. And he didn't tell her that he saw Stephanie that, that earlier that day. You know, she brought up the fact that she was, you know, nervous about seeing her at the gala. And he didn't mention that he had already saw Stephanie. And I was like, geez, Louise, <sighs> we look up, y'all. That man lips. First of all, he kissed Amara goodbye. That man's lips. I think I'm in love with the actor who playing Titus, y'all. Every time he kiss her, the fullness of his lips lingers on her skin like it's a shadow. They're still hanging around after he pulled the kiss away. And I'd be like, I said, well, I just want to kiss him too. Ooh, I had to go follow his Instagram. That man's sexy. <laughs> that man is sex to the E, y'all. Sexy, I'm telling y'all. Well, Steph is in the tub, you know, sounding like she having a little solo obsession herself. Like, how how Robin get her leg up there straight, but that girl is very flexible. <laughs> All of a sudden you hear a voice saying, Can I help you with that? And she looked around, smiled, like, what took you so long? And she like dipping it, doing it in the water and everything. Baby, it's motherfucking Titus. <laughs> at first I was like, Oh, so Evan do still look at you, you know. Unlike what you was trying to tell Bella area, but no motherfucker Titus coming to connect with Stephanie. No, Titus, no, 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 babe. That's not what I want for us. Like, no, no, no. Wasn't you just salty about your wife sleeping with Damian Collins and now you finna come creep up here with Stephanie? Bro, with your sexy ass. Man, they was that bad scene. That bath scene was good. I'm just telling you, they had a nice little sexy, subtle way of showing us her, her, um, every time she hit a peak, just like, every time, I was like, you better do whatever you're doing in that water, Titus, baby. It was another motherfucking dream. <laughs> Stephanie be dreaming her 
her ass off, it didn't happen. It wasn't real. She really was in her solo don't know mind state. And she was thinking about what she would do if Titus was there. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I love that song. I belong to you. You. I think that's Sabrina Claudio. I think that's Sabrina Claudio. Which I can't stand Sabrina Claudio, but I like her music because that bitch don't like black people. But still. I thought that was Sabrina Cotty, y'all. Mm. I don't remember. Anyway, so like I said, Tracy is or was her sister who died of an opioid addiction. And at first I was like, I wonder if Peter is working with, uh, Peter's is working with Pure For. Like, is that their real goal to like take over and gentrify this neighborhood and flood it with drugs? Is that what's really going on? Well, we were at the shindig. Everybody arriving, you know, um, Stephanie and, and Evan being interviewed by Nicole and, um, Bella, she arrived with Roderick and he used to play for the Atlanta Falcons and Evan is looking at him real sideways. I was like, what's going on with that, Evan? I peep game on that, sir. Well, Pure Foy, he meets with Amora and Titus and uh, introduce him to his wife, Juniper. That's a hell of a fucking name. Juniper looked Titus up and down like he's a motherfucking snack. I said, you better get your eyes off my man, boo. You better get your motherfucking eyes off him. Anyway, so he introduced her to Juniper and his daughter, Lori. I said, we already see Lori going to be on Titus, right? Juniper asked, like, Lord, Lord, Jesus, what we got here in front of us. Um, she started asking Amora about, like, where she came from. Like, she used to work for the DA. She worked for the DA back in Birmingham seven years. She originally from Houston. That's all the information that Amora gave her. And she's like, well, so, I'm so proud of you. It's so amazing that you was able to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Pull myself up from what, bitch? Like, what the hell? What, what are you insinuating here? <laughs> oh, yeah, they real got some real racist and prejudiced tendency. Juniper and Hunter, which is pure for his first name, but I'm gonna keep calling him pure for it. And I was like, this half is tripping. Pull myself up. Anyway, everybody at this gala. Uh, Rondell is catering it, which I really wish I would have loved to see her part of the gala instead of working. Like, she has employees. The employees could have worked, but yeah, she's working. And um, Peter's rolled up on her. She's like, what the fuck are you here for? Just to antagonize her ass. That's all he really there for. I was like, slap his ass. She, he still reached for the food. She slapped the fuck out of his hand. He looked like, did this bitch just hit me? I will kill you over that. Took a bite into the food and said it needed some more sauce and then put the half eaten little finger back on the damn slider, back on the damn plate. I was like, you motherfucker, her. Rondell said, you better get the hell away from me. Feel I have to get my own training. You better get away from me. So Evan stepped up like, what's good? What's good? You know, got his little roadies, his henchmen behind him. They don't really do shit but stand there and hold umbrellas over his head. And Peter said, like, hey, ain't nothing like family. I'm going to miss her when she gone. The fuck that's supposed to mean, right? That's what Evan said. The hell that mean? What, what do you mean by that? Dude, you're not that green. He already threatened your sister once earlier today. Told you, you better take her or I will. And now he threatened her again. What more clarity do you need? What more clarity do you need? So in the bathroom, Lori and Carly meet up. And she's like, oh, yeah, the little Lancaster daughter. And she was like, Carly was like, I wouldn't expect you to be here. You know what I'm saying? You know, they families or enemies in this big-ass court case. They swap wits about which family is the best, pretty much. And then they swap spit, y'all. <laughs> oh, my damn. Oh, my damn. I was not ready. I was not ready. Like, Carly is gay, y'all. And she's going to be sleeping with the enemy. Mm. Literally speaking, you know, the enemy of the family. Baby, I wasn't ready. I was like, this is going to be a good show. This is going to be a good show. Here I am thinking that something is wrong with the dude Khalil. And that's why Carly really wasn't feeling him. But no, no, no. Carly has not came out of the closet. Lori know this. Evidently, they had some type of run in before. Lori got all up in her face, baby. First, she took a phone and put a phone and said, here, call me when you're ready to talk. We have some real conversation. She talking about a horizontal tango. That's what she talked about. And Lori walked up to her and took her tongue. And licked her lip, dog. She licked Carly's lip from here on up. So it wasn't actually a quick kiss. They didn't swap speak, but she licked her lips as to say, Imagine what I could do to your other lips. That's how Lori licked the baby. I'm telling you. 
I ain't going for people licking me. But if some dude lick my lips like that, I don't be thinking, what the hell you could do with my lower half? You know what I'm saying? That's how Lori licked her. I was like, Corey, Carly was standing there like, the fuck am I feeling right now? <laughs> what am I feeling right now? <laughs> it was almost like she wanted to clutch her imaginary pearls and then go play with Lori's pearl at the same time. I'm just saying. That's, uh, that's how I saw that scene. Anyway, I think this show does a really, really good job at building sexual tension and not making it seem sleazy. It's a sexiness to it. And I'm totally here for it. I'm totally here for it all. That bad scene we go back to Robin. The, the beginning with Titus. Even the lick of the lip from Lori Carly. I was like, that's some sexy shit. I, it, it was. Anyway. As Amara was getting acquainted with the food and Rondell, Steph rolled up like, look what the cat done drug in. She didn't say those words, but that's how she, that's how she rolled up. I was like, that hug was so fake. It was so fake. The shade she was throwing at Amara should have been fucking Amara face up. I'm just saying. She was like, yeah, big sis taught little sis everything. We even shared things, shared a lot of things. You know, she was talking about Titus. And she's like, it seems just yesterday, because Titus rolled up. It seems like just yesterday that I seen you. Oh, it was yesterday. And the was like, well, you saw him yesterday. You know, Stephanie covered her ass and his a little bit. Like, I, I saw an article about him. That's what I'm talking about. And at first I was like, did they really smash? No, I was still believing it was just a dream. I still think it was just a dream. Y'all let me know what y'all thought down in the comment section. Anyway. Evan wrote up like, oh, this your old boo from college, right? You know what I'm saying? Well, old boo, me her new husband, you know what I'm saying? And he's like, oh, Mayor. No, he said, oh, Evan, nice to meet you. And he said, uh, uh Mayor Lancaster, you. I was like, okay. I'm like, fuck you, clown. <laughs> I told y'all, the only Lancasters I'm liking right now is um, Carly and, damn, I got a lot left to go. Carly and Rondell. This is going to be a long review. I see this already. So, all through dinner, all kind of looks being thrown. Titus and Stephanie looking at each other. Carly and Pro for looking at each other. Lori and Carly. And Lori, like, refreshing her makeup. Like, like, hey, look at my lips, girl. What I can do with them. Amara, she trying her best not to look at Titus because it is written all over her face that her wheels are spinning in her head. Juniper, she got her eyes on Titus. And I was right. Evan had his eyes on Bella. So, after Irene give her a little arousing, heartwarming speech, Pure Force said, hey, I want to take the stand, which is rude as fuck. You're supposed to let the guest of honor have the last speech. But what he did, he got up there and donated $500 million. He matched their donations dollar for dollar. As if to say, you know, we're united in this fight against this horrible disease. You know, horrible disease. So, call out, like, I can show this motherfucker where he going to stick that. I'm going to call her daddy. His name is Steven, but I'm going to call him by his last name, call out. So, anyway. Titus and Amara start to head out, and Steph stopped him like, "Hey, did you set your boss up to uh for that donation?" He was like, "Yeah, I did suggest that." He said, "Oh, you want him to upstage my damn mama?" Steph like, "No, Amara said, you know damn well that that ain't what Titus is about. He wouldn't do that." She said, "I thought I knew him better than that, but obviously I don't. He with you. You know what I'm saying?" So Amara, <laughs> she gonna take that case, baby. Believe that she gonna take that case. So um. Evan smug ass, like, ooh, I love my baby, talk sexy, that legal easy, it make, make me sexy. So Titus is like, you know what, it's time to roll, call, uh, call him, like, you know, Evan, like, nighty night, it's childish ass, he's so fucking childish. Well, they get home and um, Amora confronts the lie, like, why you didn't tell me that you saw that chick? And he was like, dude, it was it's work related, you know, I didn't lie, I just didn't tell you. Titus, baby, omission of the truth is a lie. Just, I'm just let you know that. Omission of the truth. But come to find out, she said he only married her because she got pregnant. And if she wasn't pregnant, he would have went back to Stephanie in the first place. He like, I didn't want Stephanie. I wanted you. You know what I'm saying? I wanted you. Um, Amara feels like this is just payback. I'm, you working with her or whatever. It's payback to get back at me. He's like, look, don't be deflecting that shit, all your shit on me. You the motherfucker who cheated. So now it's still making me think that he did not get in the bathtub part. That was, that was just in in Stephanie's head. And um, and I knew it, baby. I knew it. Amara was taking the case. She, Evan and Steph, they back at the crib. And Evan is like, you know, it was a good night, right? It's Dude, we can start front. We don't even like each other. The show is over. He was like, oh, my bad. I thought we could at least have a fucking civil conversation for a change. Um, but I guess you're going to save all your niceties for Titus. You know, he must have hurt that he dissed you for his home, for your homegirl back in the day, right? So Stephanie deflects and like, look her. 
get your idiot ass sister get on board. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Peters is a client of Carlisle's. And she need, this is what he was talking about when he said, you can't even get your dumb ass husband to get on board. This is what it was. Stephanie is trying to get Evan to get his sister to sell that restaurant because it's going to make them a whole lot of money because Peters is one of their largest clients. He's like, oh, here we go. You so eager, eager little princess out here trying to do your daddy's bidding. You know what your problem is? The problem that you have with men is you so in love with your damn daddy. I was like, oh, did he just say she in love with the motherfucking daddy? I know there has been stories about it. Remember, um, Eve's Bayou and that daughter was in love with the daddy. Yes, it's a possibility. I hope this ain't no shit like that, but that's what I'm saying. He's like, you so in love. I got friends out here. Like, I just want to marry my daddy. I just don't understand that. I wouldn't mind finding a man with some good qualities that my daddy may have possessed. But to say I want to marry my daddy, I used to want to marry my daddy. I just think that something is strange about that. If you want the people that say that, I'm just here to say I'm, I just think that's strange. I'm just saying whatever. Anyway, she slapped the fuck out of him. She can't, she slapped the fuck out of him. And she, <laughs> he say, there we go. That's the bitch we all know and love. There she go right there. She say, look her. I'm not letting your hood red ass sister, your hood red ass sister, screw up this deal for us. Either you do it or I'ma step in. He yoked her ass up against that wall. <laughs> what you gonna do, boo? Huh? What you gonna do? Kick, scream, pout, and then when shit don't go your way, you gonna run to daddy with like the little confident bitch that you are. You pathetic, predictable. <laughs> this is why he had, he won't let your ass have a firm. Maybe if you weren't so busy kissing your daddy's ass, you would have noticed that your little sister was becoming a junkie. I was like, the fuck? Damn, did he go there? Did he go there? Evan made the mistake by turning his back on her ass. Baby, next thing we knew, she had that cold, hard steel pressed to his temple, had that bitch cocked with a bullet in the chamber. She was ready, ready. Like, what? What? Say it again. Say it again. You protect this? You protect this? Right? What am I good for? What am I going to do? Huh? Tell me, tell me. Phone check on me. You know what I'm saying? He was like, put the gun down. Oh, but I'm pathetic and predictable, sir. You know, you wouldn't kill the man. Oh, you like that title, huh? You like that. Let me tell you something. If they did, if I did kill you, trust me, baby, they would not be able to identify the body. And that's if they were able to find all your little pieces of your remains that I leave scattered around. I was like, oh. Oh, Stephanie got more than a little bite in her. She, she got a little, little bark. She got a little bite in her, too. So she's like, let me tell you. If you ever speak to me in that way again, it will be the last words that you utter. And then she kissed him. <laughs> Let's put the tongue on that earth. <laughs> he sitting there in the cold, her motherfucking sweat. He grabbed his shoes and skedaddled out the damn apartment. Over at Rondell's, some big black dude paid her an angry visit. Like, okay, who the fuck sent you? She was backing all up in the kitchen. You hear glass breaking. I was like, oh, no, no, no. Y'all not finna fuck with my Rondell. Yeah, that's not what we be finna do. Okay. And then Bella get a visit of her own. She in the shower all lathered up and soapy and stuff. The door opened up, and I'm thinking it's Roger coming in. And I'm like, no, it's Evan. Oh, no. Oh, no. He say, you was trying to make me mad with that dude, huh? She's throwing him all up in my face. She's like, I'm single and he's single. We can enjoy each other's company. He said, no, you my damn woman. You better know that. What? He threw up against the wall and flunk her back around on the other wall and start banging her the hell out. And all I wanted to know was, what kind of traction do they have on the bottom of their feet? Or what kind of rubber mats they got on that shower floor? Because soapy shower sex is a tad bit dangerous, baby. That's what I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Y'all, that is the end of this episode. This is season one. It's a premiere season. This is the premiere episode of Ambitions. I am loving it. We're going to be back each and every week for these recaps. It comes on Tuesday night, 10, 9 central 
on the own network, Oprah Winfrey Network. Right now, if you have cable, it's on, on demand. They're going to take it off on demand on the 21st. I don't know why. We only going to get a couple days of it on demand. I don't know why. But it's on there, y'all. This is good. This was good. Thank y'all for coming back. Thank you again, Cart Cat Harlem, for recommending this show and all the other reviewers that actually recommended it as well. And everybody who voted for me to review this instead of Basketball Wise, this was a winner right here. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. See y'all next week. Peace.